Hello, Pasangala. Vanakam and welcome. This is your master teacher Niveta making bio learning very, very simplified just for all of you guys. In the Kinama Paka Pora, the Rombo Mukhyamana chapter, Rombo Weightage Ula chapter, class 12 Lavarakodia, human reproduction in the chapter. A very, very good evening, all of you. A very good evening. Hi, Lakshmi Narayan. Very good evening. Hello, Pasangala. So, session kula pora dhuk munnaadi CBSC exam rombo kitta vandhachi. Vedantu has launched its all India CBSC test series. So, if you guys want to know how your preparation is going on, go check the link that is given in the description. And now, all teachers have notes on PDF available arukhe. So, if you notes save na, go get it, download it in the link that is given in the description below. A very, very good evening. Hello, hello. Yes. So, our session kola pola. We don't want to waste time. We will see what is very very important from board exam point of view. Pasangla. In the next session, le naal important ana five mark questions soli kudu kapora. One of the male reproductive system, female reproductive reproductive system, spermatogenesis and oogenesis. In the naal topic kada in the next number session le pa kapora pasangla. Very very important high weightage topic is what we are going to deal. Okay. So let me see some fire in the chat section. Let me get some victory sign in the chat section so we can continue with the session. Hello, hello, KV boys. Hello, yes, Polama session. Kula. So, first, let's talk about what is reproduction. Reproduction na enna pasangla. it is the process of production of offsprings of their own kind is called as reproduction, and this reproduction is very, very important for high, high Abhishek to continue our. Uh, generation. Rende vidamana reproduction okay. One one the asexual reproduction in one the sexual reproduction. Okay. So we'll talk about sexual reproduction in human being. All human beings undergo sexual reproduction. Fertilization is internal. That means what fertilization happens inside the body of the female. Okay. Humans are dioecious. Sexes are separate. Okay. Then they exhibit sexual dimorphism. What is sexual dimorphism? I can differentiate between a male and a female. That is what we call it as sexual dimorphism. Okay. Next, Rombo Mukhyamana Vishyo. Even first or chapter in the chip on Orshala, reproduction in organism. And the chapter lay the Lama Padcho. Okay. So, but before I get into the chapter, I want you guys to understand what are the events that occur in human reproduction. Modala, moon event are pirike padde, pre fertilization event, fertilization ka munadi nadakra event. Events that happen during fertilization and events that happen after fertilization. Okay, so pre fertilization le enna pa narakade gametogenesis narakade gametogenesis genesis na enna pasangla synthesis or production. Okay, so gametogenesis na enna production of gametes. Okay, so what is gametogenesis? It is nothing but production of gametes. Okay, then you have insemination insemination na enna pasangla it is nothing but transfer of gametes okay then you have fertilization fertilization na enna it is the fusion of gametes okay fusion of the male and female gamete is called fertilization and after fertilization it is going to form a structure called zygote okay now this zygote will undergo implantation in the uterus okay it will undergo gestation gestation na inna pasakla development okay so the human gestation period is 10 months to or we can also tell it as 280 days 280 days and the kolanda vandu vaithula nalla develop ago then you have parturation what is parturation parturation is child birth okay we are done with half of the chapter here okay hi ordinary person hi discuss through this re human reproduction chapter okay so modalada nama paaka poradhu the male reproductive system so can anyone tell me which is the male reproductive organ the male reproductive organ is pasangla testis okay so testis is the male reproductive organ where it is situated it is situated outside the abdominal cavity in a pouch like structure called scortum so this scortum 
the function enna na it helps in maintaining the lower temperature of the testes okay nam body temperature oda scrotum la temperature will be less it will be 2 to 2.5 degree celsius less okay so to reduce the temperature which will favor my spermatogenesis that is why your testes is located outside the body okay so in adults each testes is oval in shape you can see it is this oval in shape okay it is 4 to 5 cm and 2 to 3 cm in width and this entire testis is covered by a dense covering and each testis has 250 compartments testis la enna irukku pasangala compartments irukku and the compartments la nama enna solrona we call it as testicular lobules okay how many testicular lobules are there you have 250 testicular lobules pasangala okay so testis is the main organ primary sex organ okay in that you have the testis is covered by a very good connective tissue and this testis is made up of lobular structures called testicular lobules okay yes so each lobule contains one two three highly coiled seminiferous tubular bore okay now the testicular lobules contain what seminiferous tubules romba romba mukhyamana vishayam okay it is inside the seminiferous tubule that your spermatogenesis happens okay the seminiferous tubule are made up of two types of cell so what are their cells male germ cell okay other one is your sertoline cell okay romba romba mukhyamana vishayam these male germ cells are the one which will undergo meiosis to form sperm okay this sertoli cells will help in nourishment sertoli cells enna pano it will help in nourishment of the sperm okay i'm just teaching you from exam point of view okay so what is happening these seminiferous tubule be irundichna and the seminiferous tubules veliya sila space irukum and the space vandu na interstitial space nu solren and the interstitial space la or important ana cell irukku the cell that is present in your interstitial space is called as leydig cell enna nu solren pasangala leydig cell and what is the function of this this is all very very important question and this leydig cell is going to produce a hormone called testosterone okay so this testosterone is also called as an androgen romba romba mukhyamana vishayam so this is about your testes okay next we have accessory ducts okay rete testes vasa efferentia epididymis and vas deferens so you have your rete testes then you have vasa efferentia then you have epididymis and then you have vas deferens understand the order okay so you have your testicular lobules that open into the seminiferous tubule the seminiferous tubule opens into rete testis the rete testis opens into vasa efferentia okay then the vasa efferentia opens into epididymis and finally it opens into vas deferens yes so leydig cell is very very important here okay ponna paakalam one second yes so the vasa efferentia has leave the testis and open into epididymis located along the posterior surface the epididymis leads to vas deferens that ascends from the abdomen and it finally opens into the urethra as ejaculatory duct okay this is the entire thing that is happening so you have four accessory ducts rete testis vasa efferentia epididymis and vas deferens idu nala da nama accessory ducts nu solrom so what is the function of this ducts they carry the sperm okay from the testis to your genitalia external genitalia they help in carrying of the sperm okay now very important male accessory glands so moon irukke testis accessory ducts accessory glands now we are going to discuss about accessory glands modern accessory gland is the seminal vesicle okay what is the seminal vesicle they are paired glandular sac like structure that is located near the base of the bladder secreting fluids which constitute approximately 60% of your semen okay so your sperm plus that liquid matter which is a nourishing matter is called as semen 
it also contains fructose and prostaglandins okay unga seminal vesicle enna produce panadhu semen produce panadhu it contains a lot of fructose and uh, your prostaglandins then your prostate gland it's a single large gland surrounding your urethra it is producing a milky secretion forms 25% of the semen secretion contain glycoprotein which liquefies the clotted semen then you have bulbo urethral gland pair of gland present on the either side of your membranous urethra they secrete an alkaline fluid that neutralizes the acid from the urine in urethra okay in the moon gland node function romba romba mukkiyam unga bulbo urethral gland nama corpus gland nu kuda solrom okay yes so this is what i was telling to you pasangla so this is your seminiferous tubule okay so inside the seminiferous tubule you have your spermatogonia in the spermatogonia na enna ma'am they are your main germ cells okay and in between the seminiferous tubule you have this interstitial space that pink line you are seeing no that pink line is called as an interstitial space and there you have cells called interstitial cell or lydic cell so in the interstitial cell what a function yara solunga can anyone tell me what is the function of interstitial cell it produces androgen enna produce pannudhu pasangala androgen produce pannudhu this one of the most important androgen is your testosterone okay and what is the sertoli cell they help in nourishment all of these could be potential mcq questions in your exam okay mcq question ku idella kandipa kekla idu id enna picture it is a section of your seminiferous tubule okay this picture is given in your ncert it is given as a section of your seminiferous tubule pasangla okay now let's move on to female reproductive system okay so what does the female reproductive system consist of it consist of ovaries right so what are these ovaries these ovaries are the primary sex organs in females okay then you have a pair of ov duct in the ov duct nam enna nu kuda solrom we call it as fallopian tube the ov duct is also called as what fallopian tube then you have uterus uterus is a place where the embryo develops where the fetus develops correct then we have the cervix vagina and vulva and this vulva is your external genitalia ipo onna na pathiyum clear ah padikalam okay this diagram is also given in your textbook okay so let's talk about ovaries okay ovaries oda length yolo it is around 2 to 4 cm ivula da irukku okay it is located on each side of the lower abdomen okay then it is attached to the pelvic wall it is attached to your pelvis okay so why a structure called meso ovarium it secretes two important hormone pasangala romba romba mukkiyamana hormone see unga testes la enna hormone produce agudhu testosterone unga ovaries la enna hormone produce agudhu rendu mukkiyamana hormone estrogen and progesterone romba romba mukkiyam indha progesterone வந்து நாம pregnancy hormone னு சொல்றோம் we call it as pregnancy hormone this hormone is going to support the pregnancy through the 9 months okay then this ovary is divided into two region rendu region one the peripheral cortex the outer cortex and the inner medullary region okay and the entire content of the ovary is called as a stroma so we all have a pair of ovaries pasangla so this pair of ovaries help in production of ovum that we will study a little later we will discuss oogenesis a little later okay so enna irukku unga epithelium la stroma irukke and where is this ovary located it is located in the lower abdominal region in your pelvis okay ipo nama we'll try to understand this is the entire structure which is given in your textbook so here you can see you have your ovary okay then you have your ov duct in the ov duct na enna solren fallopian tube nu solren it has three regions the ov duct or the fallopian tube has three region okay starting here it has a finger like structure called fimbriae can anyone tell me what could be the function of fimbriae the function of fimbriae is to collect the ova okay now this ovary will produce eggs correct those eggs need to be collected and they need to reach here in the ampulla so that work is done by your fimbriae okay then you have your infundibulum then you have ampulla then you have isthmus okay so fertilization that is the fusion of male and female gametes happens in the ampulla 
kidney region romba romba mukkiyo where does fertilization happen fertilization happens in the ampulla of your ov duct or fallopian tube okay now what is this ov duct going to lead into it is going to lead into a bag like structure called uterus now a uterus we also call it as a birth canal okay so uterus is made up of three important layers the outer perimetrium listen to me very carefully the middle myometrium which is a muscular layer and an inner endometrium good afternoon good afternoon so you will have three important layers okay and your uterus opens into cervix the cervix later opens into vagina okay and in between you have a canal called cervical canal ivula da avangala female reproductive system okay let's try to understand what happens in each of the cases okay ov duct it's a pair of muscular tube adoda length evlo 10 to 12 cm kittata the pen oda size okay and it extends from the peripheral of ovary to uterus so idu vandu ovary ovary la nda uterus varaikku adu vandu extend agudhu okay it is ciliated ipo idu vandu enoda ov duct na the ov duct consists of ciliated epithelium okay why this is ciliated one thing to capture the pathogen another thing it helps in the movement of ova rendathukume idu cilia vandu romba romba help aagum pasangala so evlo irukku 10 to 12 cm irukku and this fallopian duct fallopian tube or your ovarian duct ovarian duct is has three regions in fundibulum fimbriae and ampulla okay so modala in fundibulum in fundibulum is a region which is very close to ovary so idhe order la da neenga padikino okay yes movement of ovum very good very good okay so enna nadakkudna in the in fundibulum idhu da enoda ovary na enoda in fundibulum is very close to my ovary okay then in my in fundibulum i have fimbriae this fimbriae idhu da fimbriae nu the finger like structures or finger like projections they are called as fimbriae they help in collecting the ovum from the ovary in the ampulla nradhu or wider part okay it is a site of fertilization idhu romba romba mukkiyamaana vishayam already discuss pannirken isthmus isthmus nradhu in the region it is going to connect your ovaries to your uterus okay romba romba mukkiyam it is narrow the widest part of my fallopian tube is your ampulla they can ask you which of the following is the widest part of your fallopian tube it is your ampulla where does fertilization happen it happens in the ampulla okay and which is the part that is very close to uterus it is your isthmus which is the part that is very close to your uh, ovary in fundibulum which structure helps in capturing the ovum fimbri okay idha thavara idla onnume kekkradhukku illa that's it so this is your fallopian tubes pasangala next we have uterus very very important right we all developed inside the uterus inside the mother's womb we call it as womb also correct so it is large hollow muscular and highly vascular can anyone watching this live tell me what is this highly vascular na enna pasangala it is richly supplied with blood vessels nariya blood vessels irukke okay it is inverted pier inga paathinga or pier endradhu or fruit adu invert panna eppadi irukumo appadi da ungaloda uterus irukum uterus la moonu region irukke onnu vandu fundus innonu vandu body innonu vandu cervix the uterus is divided into three region the fundic uterus okay and you have your this is your uh, uterus okay fundus then you have corpus and cervix okay in the moon region romba romba mukkiyamana region ungaloda uterus la then the uterus wall or uterine wall nu solanga the uterine wall is made up of three important layers okay the outermost layer is perimetrium perimetrium na enna it is inga theriyada you can see this is your perimetrium outer layer okay it is it is a membranous layer in the myometrium is very very important it is a muscular layer okay so during childbirth during parturition you know we tell that the smooth muscles of the uterus contract correct so a um, mother ku and severe ana pain varo that happens due to the contraction of the myometrium it exhibits strong contraction during delivery that happens here isthmus function transport of zygote to uterus yes correct correct absolutely correct then endometrium in the endometrium da pasangala romba romba mukkiyam it is the innermost glandular layer perimetrium endradhu membranous layer myometrium endradhu muscular layer endometrium endradhu enna pasangala glandular layer 
okay it contains it is richly supplied with blood vessel it is uh, having a lot of blood vessels okay why is this endometrium there this endometrium is very much important for the implantation of zygote so what will happen my zygote will come and get implanted in the endometrium and shedding of endometrium is what we call it as menstrual cycle Okay, can we continue? Did everyone understand? See, in a uterus, there is a very small structure. If I remember it correctly, uh, it is 7 into 4 or 5 centimeters. That is our dimension. But this uterus can grow as big as it can actually uh, fit in a 3 or 4 kg baby. Then imagine the strength of the uterus. Correct? So, there is a very important issue in the uterus and revisio. Okay, we call it as womb. Okay, yes, we shall now continue. It is a narrow canal uh, which connects your uterus to your vagina. It is on the cervix. Okay, the lower part of the uterus, length is 2 to 3 centimeter. So, during childbirth, they actually check. In the cervix, when the ovary open, I can check. So, in the cervix, when the 10 centimeter work, you dilate during childbirth. Okay, so cervical canal, it is a cavity of cervix. We call it as birth canal. The birth canal and then so cervical canal plus vagina. And this entire cervix is filled with a cervical mucus. Okay, yeah, in the mucus circle because there can be a lot of pathogens which can enter through your cervix. So you have a mucus which is going to provide immunity or trap the germs that is going to enter your body. Okay, so this is about your uterus and cervix. So you can see this is cervix. Okay, then you have your vagina. Then you have your Vagina. What is this vagina? It is a fibromuscular tube that connects the cervix to the external body. It is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. What do you mean by stratified? Many layers of squamous epithelium. They are non-glandular. They are receptacle for the penis in sexual intercourse. It delivers the sperm to the fallopian tube and uterus. It acts like a connecting link. Okay. Yes. Yeah, then you have vulva, it's external genitalia, it has different region, monus pubis, labia majora, clitoris, labia minora and hymen. Okay, these are the five different region of your vulva. Okay, so that is going to complete your female reproductive system. So, female reproductive system and you have to know the ovary, ov duct, uterus. Okay, the moon or the functions clear up. No, uterus and amen and kodos or we call it as womb. Okay. Now we will move on to mammary gland. Mammary gland is also a sexual reproductive organ because it is going to help in uh, suckling the egg one or feeding the egg one. Okay. So it is made up of what? Glandular tissue. Okay. Your mammary gland is made up of glandular tissue. It divides into mammary lobes and this mammary lobe divide into mammary tubules. These mammary tubules divide into mammary duct. The memory duct divides into memory ampulla and this memory ampulla opens into lactiferous duct. Okay, sometimes they can ask you this question for a 5 mark question in a diagram or NCRT. That's in the question. And this lactiferous duct opens into nipple, okay, through which the milk is sucked out. So, this is what is your memory gland made up of. It is basically made up of glandular tissue which is going to secrete your milk okay yes so this is the structure okay you have this memory lobe alveolus memory duct ampulla the ampulla opens into lactiferous duct the lactiferous duct opens into nipple okay rhombo important on a structure okay this is a muscle that is going to help in connection connecting your uh, memory gland okay yes so this is all about your secondary organs okay now we will move on to gametogenesis the second important part of this chapter ma'am gametogenesis na enna ma'am it's very simple it is a process of production of gametes idu rendu la pasangala i will assure you some at least one of it can be asked either spermatogenesis or oogenesis rendu me kekka matanga idu edhila edach one kandipa kekkala pasangala so what is spermatogenesis so gametogenesis na enna it involves formation of gametes now i have a question for all of you guys gametes production la endha vidamana cell division nadakum what is the cell division that is involved in the production of gametes can anyone tell me cell division that is involved in the production of gametes. We have already done sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Option is meiosis or meiosis. 
கெமட்டோஜெனசிஸ்ல எந்த செல் டிவிஷன் நடக்கும் ரொம்ப ஈஸியான கொஸ்டின் இஸ் இட் மைட்ராசிஸ் ஆர் மியோசிஸ் பசங்களா இட் இஸ் மியோசிஸ் okay so you should always remember it is meiosis that happens during gametogenesis okay so gametogenesis la enna nadakkuduna the diploid germ cell germ cell na enna the cells which are present in your gonads ovaries and testis they undergo meiosis to form your gametes okay it is absolutely meiosis very good very good ordinary person okay so இப்ப இந்த ரெண்டு விதமான ப்ராசஸ் சொல்லலாம் எனக்கு தெரிஞ்சு ஸ்பர்மாட்டோஜெனசிஸ் ரொம்ப ஈஸி ஊ ஜெனசிஸ்ல தான் நிறைய பேருக்கு நிறைய கன்ஃபியூஷன் வரும் ஓகே பட் லெட்ஸ் மேக் இட் வெரி வெரி சிம்பிளிஃபைட் ஸ்டே வித் மீ ஃபார் த நெக்ஸ்ட் பிப்டீன் மினிட்ஸ் வி வில் ஜஸ்ட் ராக்கெட் ஓகே எஸ் அந்த பக்கம் போயிடுச்சாரோ So what is spermatogenesis? Where does it happen? What is spermatogenesis? Where does it happen? Where does it happen? Where does it happen? It happens in my testis. Okay. In testis, where does my spermatogenesis happen? It happens in my seminiferous tubules. This is the most important thing to say. Okay. In testis, what do you think? Seminiferous tubules. In the seminiferous tubules, there are two different cells. One is the spermatogonia and one is the sertolites. Okay. These spermatogonia are also called as male germ cells. Okay. These male germ cells undergo mitosis. The first ever division is mitosis. Look, this is 2 and 9 and 9. since it's human being they contain 46 chromosomes okay the primary spermatocyte since it has undergone mitosis it also contains only 46 chromosomes okay next it undergoes meiosis 1 okay enna nadakkudhu pasangala the primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 1 to form secondary spermatocyte now this secondary spermatocyte is haploid that means what it has 23 chromosomes purinjada pasangala ipo this secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 2 to form spermatid enna form agudhu spermatid inga paakringa la idhu da spermatid okay now this spermatid is a normal cell adukku vandha tail irukadhu adukku vandha head irukadhu acrosome irukadhu onnume irukadhu this spermatid undergoes a process called spermiogenesis enna undergo pannudhu pasangala spermiogenesis undergo panni it is going to form spermatozoa in the spermatozoa enna solrom sperm nu solrom so enna paakringa ore oru spermatogonia la irundhu naal haploid sperms vandu produce aagudhu okay the process of production of spermatid to sperm is called as spermiogenesis they can ask you what is the difference between spermatogenesis and spermiogenesis okay spermatogenesis na enna pasangala is the process of production of sperm okay then what is this spermiogenesis it's the process of conversion of spermatid into sperm you can see the spermatid is undergoing a lot of cellular changes idla vand tail kedaiyadu acrosome kedaiyadu onnume kedaiyadu ana avanga sperm la vand adella irukku nama sperm oda innor peru spermatozoa okay is it clear pasangala can we all continue can i get a thumbs up or a victory sign in the chat section so we can continue further so enga nadakkudhu modala location enga testis testis la enga seminiferous tubules okay so seminiferous tubule la rendu cell irukku you have your male germ cell which is otherwise called spermatogonia which undergoes mitosis to produce primary spermatocyte primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis to produce secondary spermatocyte secondary spermatocyte undergoes second meiosis to produce spermatid spermatid undergoes a process called spermiogenesis to produce functional sperm okay is this process clear ஓகே இது ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியமான விஷயம் ரொம்ப பேசிக்கான விஷயம் ஈஸியா அஞ்சு மார்க் நீங்க வாங்கணும்னா யூ ஹாவ் டு டூ திஸ் ஓகே இப்போ ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆஃப் ஸ்பர்ம் இட் இஸ் அகேன் அ வெரி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஃபைவ் மார்க் கொஸ்டின் தி ஸ்பர்ம் இஸ் மைக்ரோஸ்கோபிக் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப சின்னது வென் கம்பேர் டு யோர் எக் ஸ்பர்ம் இஸ் வெரி வெரி ஸ்மால் இட் இஸ் மொட்டைல் வாட் யூ மீன் பை மொட்டைல் தே ஷோ மூவ்மெண்ட் ஓகே அண்ட் த ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ஆஃப் தி ஸ்பர்ம் இஸ் கம்போஸ் ஆஃப் ஹெட் நெக் middle piece and tail enna irk head irk or chinna neck irk then you have your middle piece and you have a tail 
okay and the whole body of the sperm is covered by a plasma membrane ninga paakringala or black color structure the entire sperm is covered by a plasma membrane very very important five mark question okay romba mukkiyamanadhu ipo nama modala head region la enna irukku nu paathiralam head of the human sperm is smooth and oval in shape okay it has nucleus and a structure called acrosome now i want you guys to tell me what this acrosome is okay this sperm head makes about 10% of the entire cell romba chinna part da unga tail um unga neck um da romba periya part whereas your head is a very small part can anyone tell me what is this acrosome in the nucleus enga paarke it is posterior towards this end i have my nucleus now this acrosome is a very important structure and a very important question in your exam pasangala so acrosome is nothing but it is a modified enna pasangala adu modified golgi okay i think all of you know about golgi apparatus this acrosome is a modified golgi apparatus adle enna irukona adu or vesicle adu or sac marina structure okay it contains enzymes okay why are these enzymes needed these enzymes are needed to break my egg membrane enoda egg membranes break panna enak indha enzymes romba romba mukkiyamaana enzymes pasangala so you it's very important to know what is acrosome and what is its function okay yes we shall continue yeah the nucleus makes up 65% of the head and the acrosome consists 23% or 23 chromosome correct it's haploid it is haploid okay once the sperm reaches the egg the chromosome of the sperm combines with the chromosome of the ovum to make up the zygote this is very interesting and in your mukhyamana vishayam pasangala only the head region whenever the, there is fertilization this neck and tail they remain outside okay it is only the head region which will enter in fact it is only the nucleus which will enter the egg stem okay yes acrosome we already discussed it is a modified golgi apparatus it contains digestive enzyme and the digestive enzyme per enna solrom sperm lysine nu solrom rendu enzyme irukku id extra information da acrosine and hyaluronidase okay acrosome acrosine and hyaluronidase they play a very important role in penetration of ovum by the sperm romba mukkiyamaana vishayam okay it is surrounded by a double membrane so this acrosome will have a double membrane structure it is like this it is a sac that is filled with enzymes what kind of enzyme sperm lysine enzyme okay ipo centriole romba mukhyamana vishayam centriole is the part of the sperm that is located between inga theriyada between my head and my middle piece okay so what is the function of centriole these centriole are very much important they induce cleavage in the fertilized ovum once the egg gets fertilized it has to undergo mitotic division that mitotic division is helped by a proximal centriole then you have distal centriole it forms the axial filament okay this is the extra information but just remember there is a centriole that is present in the sperm cell okay so the next part will be middle piece okay in the middle piece la enna ma'am irukku the middle piece has mitochondria okay and this mitochondria is a very very important structure pasangala because it is going to produce atp and that atp is needed for the motility of the sperm inside the female reproductive system okay the last part of your sperm is tail it is the longest and the fibrous part of the sperm and it is made up of flagella okay sperm moves with the help of its tail romba romba mukkiyam it shows undulating movement okay undulating or whip like movement whip like this it moves like this okay so that's very very important so unga sperm nu ketanga na and diagram eldi head middle piece tail explain panninga you will get five marks okay function of each and every part is very very important so now let's try to understand the hormonal control eppadi vandha hormones vandu in the entire process control pannanradhu romba romba mukkiyam pasangala i think all of you know about hypothalamus okay hypothalamus enga irukku where is hypothalamus situated it is situated in your brain correct this hypothalamus produces a hormone this also is a potential 3 or 5 mark question in your exam hypothalamus produces a hormone called gonadotropin கிளியரா புரிஞ்சுக்கோங்க கொனாடோ ட்ரோபின் ரிலீசிங் ஹார்மோன் என்ன ஹார்மோன் ப்ரொடியூஸ் பண்ணுது 
gonadotropin releasing hormone so in the gnrh is going to stimulate my pituitary okay first and the hypothalamus irko keela vand pituitary irko this hypothalamus produces gnrh which stimulates my pituitary to produce gonadotropins okay now my pituitary produces what pasangla gonadotropins okay rendu vidamana gonadotropin irukku one vand fsh that is what we call as follicle stimulating hormone and the other one is lh luteinizing hormone okay so edhe the gonadotropin fsh and lh okay now what this fsh is going to do what this lh is going to do nariya students idha navaga vechukka kashta paduvanga so remember it like a story indha fsh enna panadhu fsh nera ava testis podu testis la enna irukke sertoli cells irukke correct ah so it helps the sertoli cell it stimulates my sertoli cells to undergo spermatogenesis okay the sertoli cell enna pannu nourish pannu enoda sperm cell so this fsh follicle stimulating hormone acts on the sertoli cell correct ah next i have one more hormone that is what lh luteinizing hormone and the hormone enna pasangala panna podu adu nera poi unga leydic cell stimulate pannum leydic cell enga irukke it is present in your testis outside your seminiferous tubule in a space called interstitial space ipo inda lh enna theriyuma pannum it is going to activate my leydic cell to produce test testosterone in the testosterone and rada enna pasangala it is a androgen okay very very important now this androgen is going to activate my spermatogenesis ultimate aim enna pasangala spermatogenesis nadakkanum adukaga rendu hormone kashta padudhu onnu vandu fsh innonu vandu lh fsh enna panudhu fsh is acting on my sertoli cell in the sertoli cell enna panudhu it is going to nourish my sperm lh enna panudhu lh is going to act on my leydic cell this leydic cell is going to activate my uh, leydic cell is going to produce testosterone and the testosterone is also going to activate my spermatogenesis idha da nama hormonal control in spermatogenesis nu solrom okay romba romba mukkiyamaana vishayam yaar vandu gnrh release pandra hypothalamus adu enga poi release aagudhu pituitary la so ipo pituitary ah enna produce panadhu gonadotropins edhu rendu gonadotropin fsh and lh nariya perku fsh and lh nu sonna puriyum gonadotropins nu sonna theriyadhu so fsh and lh da nama gonadotropins nu solli solrom pasangala okay so that's about your hormonal control in spermatogenesis okay so this is very important it's given as a table okay gonadotropin yaar produce pandra hypothalamus produce panadhu what is it going to, its regulation and secretion is inhibited by testosterone ipo testosterone adhigama irukku nu vechukonga gonadotropin inhibit aayirum testosterone kammiya irundhuchna gonadotropin activate aayirum okay so it stimulates fsh and lh um, synthesis then i have fsh it is produced by the anterior lobe of pituitary okay it is stimulated by the gnrh inhibited by inhibin and testosterone it stimulates spermatogenesis spermiogenesis through effects on nerve cell nerve cell na enna your sertoli okay nerve cell is nothing but your sertoli cell okay lh luteinizing hormone adu enna parano pasangala it is going to it is going to stimulate your interstitial cell or leydic cell to produce testosterone okay very very important hormonal control important question mcq la kekkalam application based la kekkalam illa or three mark question ave kekkalam okay androgen enna pasangala androgen the androgen is nothing but testosterone okay testosterone is an androgen okay who is producing it it is my interstitial cell or leydic cell is producing it okay it is stimulated by lh it establish and maintain secondary sexual characters romba romba mukkiyam okay it inhibits your gnrh secretion so your aldosterone and inhibin both of them are going to inhibit my testosterone uh, gnrh secretion okay inhibin enna pannu sertoli cells of testis stimulate the factors released by developing sperm okay it inhibits the secretion of fsh and possibly gnrh okay idu rendu unga syllabus la inhibin vandu unga syllabus la kedaiyad okay fsh lh gnrh and androgen here the androgen is testosterone pasangala okay now we will move on to oogenesis okay what is oogenesis same it is a production of ovum okay where does it happen it happens in the ovary 
ஓகே இன்னொரு இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங்கான விஷயம் என்னன்னா பசங்களா ஊஜெனசிஸ் பத்தி ஊஜெனசிஸ் பிகின்ஸ் இந்த எம்பிரியானிக் ஸ்டேஜ் வந்து எப்போ ஒரு கேர்ள் பேபி அவங்க அம்மா வயிற்றுல இருக்காங்களோ அப்பயே இந்த ஊஜெனசிஸ் பிகின் ஆயிடுது பசங்களா இட் ஸ்பர்மாட்டோஜெனசிஸ் பிகின்ஸ் ஒன்லி டியூரிங் பியூபர்டி எப்போ வந்து அவங்க ரீப்ரொடக்டிவ்லி மெச்சூர் ஆகுறாங்களோ அப்போதான் ஸ்பர்மாட்டோஜெனசிஸ் பிகின் ஆகும் பட் ஊஜெனசிஸ் பிகின்ஸ் இந்த எம்பிரியானிக் ஸ்டேஜ் செல்ஃப் அது ரொம்ப ரொம்ப முக்கியம் okay very important oogenesis occurs in the outermost layers of your ovaries it begins during the embryonic development and it is ever complete agudhu theriyuma only during fertilization okay it begins in the embryonic stage and completes during fertilization that's the most interesting thing okay moon phase irukku multiplicative phase growth phase and maturation phase it is completely different from spermatogenesis adunala da nariya perku oogenesis romba kashtama thonum okay so now we shall get into oogenesis let's see what are the other details edach doubt irundha please do put it in the comment section i'll try to clear your doubts okay so this is what they have given in your ncrt will blindly follow your ncrt okay inga kuduthirukanga parunga fetal life or your embryonic stage okay this is your fetal life fetal life la enna irukku there is oogonia in the oogonia endrad enadhu female germ cells okay these female germ cells they undergo mitosis enna undergo pannadhu pasangala mitosis undergo pannadhu just like how your spermatogonia undergo mitosis they also undergo mitosis okay the oogonia in undergo panadhu they undergo mitosis they grow big in size okay and they become what they become primary oocyte okay idu nadakkuda idu vandu embryonic stage la nadandrudu primary oocyte innor vishayam enna na pasangala in the scanning ala pannum bodu they will check whether the number of oogonia is fine okay because after that there is no oogonia that can be added and the embryonic stage la evlo oogonia irpo avladha there is no other later on there is no addition of any new oogonia in the ovaries after the baby is born what happens here is that's it okay now this primary oocyte undergoes meiotic division enna mari meiotic division undergo panadhu pasangala meiosis 1 okay innor interesting ana vishayam enna na this meiosis one is arrested okay avanga prophase one la listen to me carefully avanga prophase one la arrest aayirudhu okay arrested and the and the time la arrest aagumbodhu avladha adu varaikku mudinjadhu embryonic stage la adoda development mudinjadhu idella eppo nadakkudhu in the embryonic stage or in the fetal stage okay adukapra still the baby still the girl child attains puberty nothing new is going to happen it will remain the same okay once they begin the ovulation ovulation nadakkudala puberty attend pandranga la when they when they attend their puberty that is when this meiosis one is completed that is when they are telling the first meiotic division is completed prior to ovulation okay so that happens when there is a beginning of your menstrual cycle appo da in the primary oocyte indrathu rendu important ana structure form panadhu secondary oocyte and first polar body ma'am in the first polar body na enna ma'am very important very easy pasangala the secondary oocyte will be very big okay whereas this first polar body will be very small it will get degenerated அவ்ளோதான் and a second polar body okay any doubts please let me know and this ovum will now fertilize with the sperm to form the zygote okay so it begins in the embryonic stage but it is completed just before ov- uh, fertilization okay yes idu romba romba mukkiyana vishayam there are two innore vishayam enna na inga vandu oru oogonia 
ஆகுது ஒரே ஒரு ஓவம் தான் ப்ரொடியூஸ் ஆகுது பட் இட் வாஸ் நாட் தேட் கேஸ் இன் ஸ்பர்மாட்டோஜெனிசிஸ் இன் ஸ்பர்மாட்டோஜெனிசிஸ் ஒன் ஸ்பர்மாட்டோகோனியா ப்ரொடியூஸ்ட் ஃபோர் ஸ்பர்ம்ஸ் ரைட் ஹியர் ஒன் ஓகோனியா ப்ரொடியூசஸ் ஒன்லி ஒன் ஓவம் ரொம்ப இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங்கான விஷயம் so let's try to understand the difference between spermatogenesis and oogenesis okay idu mudichirala idu mudichittu i will also write the difference between spermatogenesis and oogenesis okay so any doubts still here pasangla please do let me know yeah so meiosis meiosis one reduction division primary oocyte is becoming secondary oocyte and first polar body meiosis two is equational division i think all of you know that right so me equational division la enna agudhu secondary oocyte is becoming ovum plus second polar body simultaneously the first polar body divides into two polar body from one oogonium one functional ovum and three polar bodies are formed okay polar bodies will degenerate soon na modhale sonna mari inda polar bodies ku periya function onnume kedaiyadhu they will just degenerate pasangala okay so this is about meiosis that is happening okay ipo if the secondary oocyte is fertilized by sperm enago secondary oocyte fertilized aachina enago it will become ovum if the secondary oocyte is not fertilized it doesn't meet any sperm it will degenerate avula da mudinjad adoda story mudinjad only if it is fertilized it will become into ovum if it is not fertilized it is not going to become ovum pasangala that is the whole idea of this entire story okay so i already nama discuss pannito yes this is what we are trying to explain okay Multi multiplicative phase growth phase and maturation phase multiplicative phase la enna agudhu they undergo mitosis they grow in size they become primary oocyte the primary oocyte undergoes meiosis it is arrested okay then it again is beginning or it enna solradhu thirupi adu trigger agudhu when during puberty okay it completes its first meiosis just prior to ovulation then just before fertilization you will basically have a ooted or mature ovum okay so mottadukku ethana polar body pasangala moonu polar body produce agudhu eppadi ma'am moonu in the first polar body it again undergoes two meiotic one meiotic division to produce two polar bodies so ultimately by the end of your oogenesis you will have one ovum okay and three polar bodies okay adha the whole aim e in the process odadhu okay so this is about your spermatogenesis and oogenesis pasangala do you have a comparative analysis okay so what is happening in spermatogenesis what is happening in oogenesis okay so spermatogenesis la ethana sperms produce agudhu four sperms okay oogenesis la ethana sperm ethana egg produce agudhu one ovum okay and how many polar body three polar bodies here that there, there there are no polar bodies okay this is one difference second difference spermatogenesis begins only after puberty puberty ka apra na spermatogenesis initiate ago whereas oogenesis begins in the embryonic stage okay and completed just prior to fertilization okay so these are some important things that i wanted to convey to you guys so in next session la nam enna la paathirko male reproductive system female reproductive system so female reproductive system la nam uh, uh, we also spoke about mammary glands and we also discussed the most important thing spermatogenesis and oogenesis pasangla okay so important questions idu da idiliye maathi maathi kepaanga spermatogenesis oogenesis diagram adu vandu diagram nu solla mudiyadhu it's a schematic representation that you have to learn okay and you also have to learn about the development of the cross section of spermat idu irundhuchla seminiferous tubule that is also very very important from exam point of view so in tomorrow session we'll discuss about fertilization we'll discuss about implantation parturition child birth and the very rumba interesting ana topics and nama naalik paakla please do revise this topic and if you guys have any doubts please do let, let me know in the comment section and do leave your feedback in the comment section thank you so much for watching thank you guys take care bye